Our Father in heaven, we're grateful at this time to kneel before thee prior to going to the church history centre to do our day's work. We're thankful for the privilege and opportunity that is ours of doing the work for those that have gone before and those that come after us, that we can preserve a history and collect and collate it and process it for future generations, that they too may experience the faith and the dedication of those and the sacrifice of those who've gone before us. We pray thy blessings will be upon us as we go about this work, that we may have thy spirit to guide us, that we may faithfully discharge our duties before thee and magnify our callings. We are grateful for our membership in the Church of Jesus Christ. In these I remember very clearly my grandmother, Oriwea Parata, taking me across to the Marae when I was a young girl, very young, and <clears throat> having me listen to our old Komatua quote their whakapapa. And at the time, I didn't appreciate it because all I wanted to do was go out and play with my cousins. I didn't want to sit and listen for two hours to the old people quoting their whakapapa back to Adam and Eve. Um, and so <clears throat> I learned up to nine generations and I didn't want to go anymore. And I am so sorry now that I never listened to my grandmother because she would say, If you learn it now while you're young, you will never forget it. And I have a photograph of her in my office. And every time I look at her photograph and she's looking right at me, I feel like she's saying to me, I told you so. You should have listened to me. When I met Vic, he was just like a Mormon boy. He never drank, he never smoked. Um, and he was a, oh, I noticed all the good qualities about him. He was, um, well, I could say spiritual, he was a, a very good person and I knew that I felt in my heart that one day he would join the church. She took me out to her Ngāti Tōr people in Takapuwahia Purirua and it opened a new world to me. It was like a window to a new world and I, I loved the experience. The first day I arrived there she took me in to the Arthur family home and there they uffied me. They put their arms around him and, and actually loved him into the gospel. They, Ken Arthur, one of the Arthur brothers, was the one that baptised him. Um, so um, he loved the people from the par and they loved him. In 1972, while we were living in Australia, I was asked to go and sing um, in Canada. There was an Air New Zealand convention up there. So I went to Canada and on the way back from Vancouver, I knew that I'd heard that there was a New Zealand missionary reunion in Salt Lake City. So I called in and attended that reunion 
going to that reunion was, I felt at the time was amazing because I heard these old American men speaking te reo Māori to each other. And it fascinated me. I thought, this will be an amazing story. I got to know some of them and then got um, from Elder Glenn Rudd, who was very, very good to me. Um, and he gave me names of missionaries that were here in the 1930s. I met some of them at that reunion, which was Robert L. Simpson, Elder Glenn Rudd, uh, Dick Lambert, who were all in that photograph in 1938 with President George Albert Smith that was taken in Turanga Wawamarae. So I was able to meet some of these old missionaries at that time. So when I went back in 1988, some of them were still alive and they were in their late 80s and early 90s. These missionaries had been meeting once a month since 1943 and speaking to reo Māori to each other. Matthew Cowley at the time was their mission president and he told them when they went back to the States that he, he organised for them to meet once a month so they would never forget the language. He said, because one day you will be needed. They were wonderful to me um, because if I met one missionary, he would let me know another missionary that served around the same time as he did. So I would get those contacts from the various missionaries and so I'd contact the next person and found some of the most incredible photographs. And so these families were hearing uh, of this Sister Parker uh, through the New Zealand Missionary Society and all of a sudden, you know, she was getting calls from them and saying, look, uh, can, we, can we send you um, our father's or grandfather's journals? Can we send you his photographs? With Rangi and Vic, I recommended that um, we form a trust, uh, a, which would be established as a charitable trust. And, um, and so I did that. I um, established a trust. And I called it the Kangawari Trust after, really after Matthew Cowley. Because that was Matthew Cowley's famous saying, Kang Awari. In bags wrapped with acid tree paper. And then... The uh, vision that she had about it all, and she had it right from the beginning. No, not, not, not bits and pieces, but she had it right right from the beginning and uh, I don't know who else could have, uh, uh, you know, could, re could have really done it. Sister Parker and her good husband, uh, brother, uh, brother Parker, have a beautiful sweet spirit which is important in this, in this work. And because of that wairua and because of their dedication, because of their service, is why they have been able to accumulate the, the tonga that they have here today. And we've got so much to be thankful for that she was able to <coughs> excuse me, have that uh, want, that need, that, and Vic was very supportive. She's been here 20 times or more, and I've sent her half the stuff she's got. I spent 25, 30 years collecting stuff to ship to her. And my assignments on this end is 
getting stuff to her. And of course, I knew all the missionaries and I traveled a lot, so we sent her a lot. And I've been in the middle of that museum of hers all the time, you know, back and forth. And she calls me, I think she calls me every week now even. I don't do much for her now, but I did a lot. Prison Craven, Elder Glenn Rudd, Prison Doug Martin, and Robert L. Simpson that I got to know before he passed away. He was another one that supported what we were doing at that time. So those men were a big support to me.